Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for March 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, you know that I'm going to use my Radley Valentine decks. The decks that are calling to me today are my Archangel Power Tarot cards for the main message. I will pull, I'm going to actually use all of them today. I will pull one from my Angel Tarot cards. I will also pull one from my Guardian Angel cards. After that, I will pull one from my um, Emily Anderson Crystal Deck to see what might help us a little bit to get through these times. Now, this is the introduction, so remember, you know, I, you know, I will put the timestamp, and you know, you press on that, I think, and it takes you right to where it needs to be. Hopefully, I will put the timestamp in the, um, you know, in the description, so you can bypass the introduction. Okay. I hope you watch it at least once, though. Now, for the introduction, Universal Energies, I am going to use my Weight Rider Tarot, and we'll pull one, maybe one, maybe more, from my Osha Zen Tarot cards. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki Energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Talk a little bit about the... Um, the energies, what's going on for here. Now remember, all the planets are going direct, but they get close to each other. So they're like, you know, think of it as they're like gossipy old, old men and women. They, you know, they're just like da, 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 telling everything what's good and what's bad about the world. Now, on the 27th, Mercury will be leaving Pisces, where it's been kind of lulled a little bit. It'll be leaving um, Pisces and entering Aries, and I think it was around to something Eastern time. So, that, you know, so it is moving into Aries. Now, Mercury basically took a little bit of a rest with, um, you know, being in Pisces was kind of like, okay, let's, let's go with that flow. Let's see what happens. Mercury's expectations, these are my, my feelings, my gut feelings. Mercury's expectations were not met. So it is entering into Aries with a vengeance, with a force. And it's got a lot of stuff to talk about. It really wants to get whatever Mercury's message is, whatever Mercury feels the message needs to be, it wants to put it out there. Now, Aries is about, you know, it's the first sign of the astrological year, and it is about self, it is about I, and, but it's not necessarily something that is really, um, you know, it's not, you don't have to say that it's very self-centered or self-absorbed, sometimes it can be, but a lot of times you have to remember that you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of others. So Mercury, that 20, what did I say that it was going on to? Again, I passed that up. Um, on the 27th, Mercury entering Aries, it's going to be really, you know, what matters to you? What ma I shouldn't say you, what matters to the universe? What matters to Mercury? Okay, and expect it to be a little bit on that forceful side. It will be there for a week or two. Let's see, when does it change again? Mercury will then go to Taurus on the 18th. So it will be there for a few few weeks. Now, the other thing that we want to know is the new moon in Aries. And this is what really starts the astrological season. It will be on the April 1st. Again, I think that was like 2.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is what really starts Aries. So we've had a little preliminary. We've had a little bit of Aries energy you know, getting us motivated, having, you know, having, you know, us do things that we have to do to get ready. The new moon, remember, full moon to new moon, waning, get rid of stuff, new moon to full moon, waxing, take things in, build on things. But the new moon is really going to be more of the push. Now, I think it's interesting that it's on April 1st, which is April, Fool, April Fool's Day. Who's to say what that all means? But I did kind of get... Um, you know, that that had kind of a trickster type of energy. We will see. We will see what it is. But new moon is a, is a good time for you to start. Um, start something wonderful. Start something big. Something that concerns you. Um, and that, you know, of course, that could be a business or any of those relationships I always talk about. Something that concerns you. Maybe, you know, it could be a diet program, but it could also be something that really... Um, very motivating energy here with that new moon. But again, with Mercury, forceful, getting that message out, a lot, very blunt. New moon, though, again, on the 1st of April, trickster energy. Now, you know, more because of the people that know April 1st as April Fool's Day, but 
being a fool is okay because it means you have a belief in something more than you. Okay, let's see what we have here. Remember, I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. Like I said, I pray, meditate, and infuse the cards with Reiki energy. But I open myself to higher power, and I ask that message to come through and, you know, and try to step out of its way. Okay, let's see what we have for March 28th through the 31st. First card is we have that moon, that moon energy. So that is the 18. So remember that the, um, you know, the cards all have energies. We basically go with our, our fire, which we're in now, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, passionate, burning, determined. We then have our um, earth energy, which is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, very solid, tangible energy, money, job, career, home, your actual building, your home. Then we go to our air energy, which is swords energy. It is our Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. There is some stuff going on. Not quite this week. I was a little mistaken. It's more in the in April when Venus does some stuff with Aquarius. Um, but it is making plans, thinking things through, hearing news. And then we come to water energy, cup energy, which is our Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. And it's very fluid, very emotional energy. So now we have the moon. We have So is this telling us something is going to be going on around that full moon? I mean, I'm sorry, around that new moon? I'm kind of looking at the, um, I don't know if you want to say that these are dogs or wolves or feral animals. I'm kind of looking at the animals, you know, barking at it or looking at it or just, and I'm looking at this moon. And, you know, it, it always is interesting when you look at the cards, they all mean, they always have a new meaning. And there's a lot, there's a stern, and there's a very stern energy around this. So I don't know if we're going to have some stern energy leading up to that new moon. And that could be okay. That could be okay because then the new moon comes and then that clears away a lot of this energy. But there's this, you know, this new, there's this full, this new moon, blah, 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 new moon, very stern, you know, there's this, you know, you know, it's in front of the sun, it's kind of eclipsy, um, you know, but just very new moon, and there's these, it's affecting, it's affecting a lot of the animalistic tendencies. Not quite sure what that's all, way, all about. The moon does have hidden energies, things going on behind the scenes, things that we don't necessarily have to see. So with this, with, with Mercury on the 27th, because that's going to be, you know, right before this, that's going to be that Sunday, um, you know, we could expect a little, like I said, you know, the, the, as we lead up to that new moon, there could be some, you know, really, um, I don't know, is it harsh? Is it stern? It just, for, for looking at the moon this time around, or whatever this face is in, this does not look happy. It does not look happy. And, you know, I don't normally get that energies from these. Your next card is, okay, that is reversed. Remember, reversed cards have a little more meaning to them. So now we have a four. Okay, we'll have an 18, one new beginnings, a 10 transition, eight unlimited opportunities, okay? Now you add the one plus eight together, it becomes a nine. We're going back to this card. Nine, let's wrap it up. Things are done. And this could be, again, as the waning, you know, as the moon wanes, wrap it up. Things are done. Now we go to four. Four has a... Um, organization, some stability, also some leadership energy to it. This is the Four of Swords, like I said, air energy. This is, you know, I'm kind of, again, these cards are looking at me, are looking at this a little bit differently. We have this stained glass over here. We have this person that's basically kind of, you know, is on, on their knees. And then we have, um, it looks like a very feminine energy. It could be the, it could be the Empress who is, I look at it, the empress as the feminine um, divine, okay? Now, and there, you know, this is kind of, it's supplication, it's asking for things. Now, the four, the four of swords, though, has this resting. You know, a lot of times this is rest. Take it easy a little bit. You know, meditate, connect with higher power energy, which is always, the tarot is extremely spiritual energy. So this is, you know, it's always running through, you know, connect with your higher power. But now with this, it's kind of like we have these three swords that are just hanging there. And it's, I kind of get this like, you know, it, you know, it's kind of like, is it ready to drop? Are things ready to drop? But this person is at peace and at the same time has a sword hidden, he has a sword ready. So, what a, you know, I, I'm getting this, you know, ready to drop sword, but the sword is ready. 
okay? But pray, be at peace, rest, let the, you know, kind of see where things are going. Now let's go on here. Celebration. I love this. I love the Three of Cups. These are my, my um, I call them my crazy ladies. Um, so whatever is happening, it has to happen in order to bring about something better for us. Cups are our water energy. It is our, um, you know, like I said, our Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, fluid and emotional energy. Three has a lot of power to it. You do something three times, three, you know, um, you do something three times, say something three times. It's also about celebration and creativity. So whatever this is, whatever's happening, it is something that's supposed to be happening. It is something that will, you know, um, again, these cards are kind of popping in the different areas. It does bring about a harvest. Um, I'm kind of getting kind of like the harvest is ready to, you know, I'm kind of getting a pumpkin type of energy here. And, you know, maybe if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, you know, in the in the Northern Hemisphere, pumpkins basically are with the fall. It's there's a completion energy with this, but they're celebrating. They're they're getting, you know, they're saying all is well, all is good. OK, now. So, yeah, what do we have here? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like. These two could be leading up to the moon, I mean, to that new moon. Um, you know, chill out a little bit. Uh, this person, you know, like I, this person might have some danger, you know, it might be facing some danger energy here. But if you really look, the person's face is at peace. So whatever the danger is, it's not going to affect him. And then we have our ladies, the three of cups, celebrating, celebrating the outcome. So let's see what this is all about here. Yeah, that moon's uh, sternness is kind of in the feral animals. But remember, I'm always saying, you know, there's I do believe in soul contracts, that we come down knowing what we're going to be doing, even though it kind of goes out of our mind. Um, you know, we, we lose the memory of that. We were meant for this time. You are all, we are all light workers. That's why we are joined together here. And, um, you know, just to encourage each other and keep us on track. And our light needs to shine brightly because there's a lot of darkness out there that we counter, okay? So this is going to be one of those, oh my goodness, and there we go. That one flipped over. So remember I was talking about the fool, um, you know, basically have faith, the fool. Here, let's take a look at this again. This is Osha Zentera. One card came out. It is zero. Zero is God and source energy. This is called the fool. The fool has faith. Again, we have the moon up there, um, so have faith. Um, the fool, you know, basically jumping off the cliff. I shouldn't say jumping, stepping off the cliff, stepping into the unknown, but yet at the same time has faith. And this is the beginning of a new journey, a beginning of a new um, path. So something's going on. I don't know that, you know, is this for the universe? Is this for somebody personal? I don't really know per se, but... It does feel like there's a something that, you know, maybe leading up to that new moon, that there's something that's just really kind of, you know, I kind of get a judgy type of energy with this moon here. Um, and the feral dogs, the weird, cre the, you know, isn't a, a lobster? That's a lobster, right? So a lobster isn't that kind of one of the bottom feeders also. So it's it's kind of, there's there's some judgy energy here. Be at peace, be at rest, even though things might look bad. Things aren't, aren't as bad as they seem, or they might be as bad as they seem, but they're not necessarily going to be affecting you as badly as you believed. There is a lot of um, rejoicing and celebration. So that would be a lovely energy to have. That would be a lovely energy. And then we have the fool. We have the fool. And the fool is looking up to the heavens, looking up to the universe. So we've got really interesting stuff going on. I do want you to watch out for, well, not watch out, be aware of Mercury in Aries because there's going to be, woo, let's, you know, Mercury's been holding back while it's been in Pisces, hanging out with Jupiter. And remember, Mercury and Jupiter, they're not necessarily the best of friends. So just saying. So there was a little bit of animosity there, but Neptune, Mercury, and Jupiter, it was kind of a, la la type of land and now mercury's stepping out into aries and basically saying expect things to get real okay the communication the communication mercury over communication electronics um you know there's a lot of i feel a lot of karma also with mercury okay 
especially when it goes retro, which it isn't going to do for a little bit of time. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know how you're interpreting this. It's just that they were really popping at me with a little bit of difference here. So take a moment to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. Remember, you need to do that to keep me on the air, and I really appreciate you doing that. So thank you so much. Now, why don't we start our readings? <music> 